This one finally reached the level to shut it off. Finally got my float valves and other parts in so I can go ahead and automate the livestock waterers and finish up some of the automated drip system for the garden. I have some float valves, so these came in two packs. I have six of them. That way I can put a water on all three pig pens, the chicken coop, and one for the dogs and cats bull. And then I'll have one left over, which, you know, I could put one down in the aquaponic system or in the pond or, you know, it, it, there's a lot of different things I could use one for. You've probably seen a float valve in the back of your toilet. You know, the the ball floats on the water and as the water raises, that shuts the valve off. Well, this is actually just the same thing, only maybe a smarter design. I have 55 gallon barrels for the waterers. Uh, for the pig pens so if I drill a hole in the top that's large enough for this three-quarter this is for a standard hose that's why I got it hose will be cheaper for now and then I can upgrade to three-quarter PVC when I'm ready but this will come out the top of the barrel I'll drill a hole for it of course I'll put this gasket on there which is actually kind of a tight fit so this is a bulkhead and if you can imagine just the tip comes through the top of the barrel and then you can screw this down on top of that i can use a connector like this or if i have a garden hose that already has one but this will give you the idea of how that connects so the water tower is way uphill and and the water runs down with gravity uh, and then they even include this little elbow here you can throw on so you got this sitting like so and this little green ball basically floats so once the water level rises enough to make that float it'll turn off that switch it'll activate that switch and that'll shut things down and when the water level falls the float will fall and then the the water can flow into the tank until it's full again i grabbed a few t's to help me connect those and then of course i needed a bunch of uh, hose connections and I have a couple more tees and this will help me set up for my garden watering system and the livestock watering system. I ordered these things a long time ago and I was trying to get this sunshade cloth in time to beat the heat wave to throw in the geothermal. <clears throat> Some stuff has died off since then but we can get it up today and then I ran a larger well my super base v into the geothermal so that i can power the aquaponic system it the the extension solar cord that i had wasn't working so i got some more and some more attachments that should solve that problem on top of all of that jeremy sent in a care package and i'm going to show you real quick what he sent in i keep about 50 gallons of diesel and gasoline on my homestead at all times and I have two hand pumps, one of them broke. And this crank one was about the same price. So I put that on my list and and Jeremy sent that on that in. And Jeremy sent these in from my list. I, I only had one on the list and he sent in two. So I appreciate that. This is a skill saw brand, so it's a nicer blade. These should last quite a while. And then on his own cognizance, I guess you could say, <laughs> Uh, wildflowers so this is a collection of 14 annuals and peren perennials they're all listed on the back here and <clears throat> I do have some wildflowers finally coming up you know my season only started uh, about May 15th so you know it hasn't been going too long but I planted a lot of seeds and most of them didn't come up maybe because I didn't have my watering system in place really and then uh, well these are a nice treat for the dogs so we'll give them some pig ears thanks Jeremy for sending this in you want to cheat no oh, Stapes got that one here good girl good girl yeah that's fun huh <laughs> good girl I'm gonna go chomp on that. She looks pretty happy. <laughs> and then we'll do one for Incas over here. Here you go, buddy. It's funny how they kind of take it and hide so they can enjoy it in peace. <laughs> Is that yummy, bud? 
these step bits make jobs like this really easy because I can just easily step this, just drill it into the hole until it's probably got to be about an inch for this three quarter to fit in there with the bulkhead. But you don't have to go looking for tools and whatever, you know, just a real quick, easy uh, hole. I'll, I'll drill this into the barrels and into the chicken waterer. And then we'll have to kind of jerry-rig a system for the dogs, I think. We'll see what happens. Here's my first barrel here. I've got a goat and two male pigs in here, some boars. So we're just going to drill a hole <laughs> in the top of the lid here. This is a cut lid. I normally just fill this with a hose. But I can just leave it sat there, drill a hole that this will slide up through. And we'll show you how it looks in a minute here. So that's it. I can just attach a hose or or PVC pipe connection. This is a standard three quarter. And then underneath you can see there's the float valve. So the water level where it's at now will end up going up about four to six more inches and then stop before it overflows. And the good thing about this, if I run out of water or something breaks down up the line, this will always be full. And so if it breaks down, I'll still have about a week on my hands that I can fix the system before they run out of water. If you have a barrel that doesn't have the lid cut off, these spout or these, you know, these plugs, these, I don't know, lid holes, <laughs> uh, they have threads and I think it's a three quarter and I think you can just punch out this here. So let's try that. And we could probably just screw the valve right into that. I'm not sure it'll fit though. Let's see how that works. Perfect. It just fits in there. Okay. And because we don't even need to put that little elbow on it because there's nowhere for it to go but into the container. So if this screws into that plug, I might be able to just seat it like so and it'll be perfect. That should do the trick. Just goes right up through the center. The threads even worked. So now I can just set this down into the hole. I don't need to worry about losing it now. And it should just screw in like so. So again, we can just connect a three quarter fitting. They do make these with a side um, spout rather than going straight up. It goes through the side. So you can connect these through the side of a tank if you want to which would make sense with this trough here but i can rig this up with a piece of wire to hang it in there and auto fill it and i'm thinking i don't know i might just go to a barrel like the rest of them uh, for that one as well i always keep a roll of rewire you might be blown away <laughs> with all the things you can do with a little bit of wire this one because it's inside needed a little bit of a hose extension to come up so the valve is just hanging down inside. I was careful because it slants to make sure that the level will be low enough that number one, it doesn't overflow. And number two, that it's actually a couple inches below because she climbs in here to take a little bit of a spa treatment. <laughs> I finally set the pump up at the cistern there. So that's 3,600 gallons. It harvests rainwater from that surface. The pump is pumping water all the way up this hose. Then it connects to the PVC here and it comes into the top of the tank over here. I have a float switch up in the tank that will activate and tell the system to turn on and pump water up to the container, which it's not that far yet. It's not, it's about half full. So it needs to be almost empty before it activates. So I just connected the wires directly, but I'll unplug those now and plug them into the switch here. So now the water is no longer pumping, but as soon as the water, the tank gets almost empty, it'll only have about 50 gallons left. Then it'll turn on the pump and automatically fill itself from my cistern. This is all temporary for now. The hose and the line, the electrical wire, because eventually I'll pipe in PVC and the only power cord will run from the pump to the switch. And then I think that I'll install the, the wind turbine up top, a battery and an inverter, and I'll power it from there rather than running a cord to the shop. 
with that out of the way, <laughs> I know that I have this much hose left, so I can use this to connect my livestock waterers. I tried to go without thread tape, and they were leaking, so I had to go back and put thread tape on everything, but you can see they're doing exactly what they're supposed to, and this one I just shut the valve off, so everything's already full. It was crazy fast, but this one I had it shut, so, so you can kind of witness this one. This water was from a little bit of a leak, so I put thread seal in there. Now we're golden, and this one will be full in a minute. And then as they drink, the dogs can water the this pen, that pen, that pen. They can all drink anytime they want, and these containers will remain completely full. And once the water tower gets low, it'll activate a pump from the 3600 gallon cistern and refill it. So everything is automated. Uh, I'm going to have to get some more hose to run one over to the chicken coop. And then this garden and that garden are automated, but I need to run another hose out to these Hugo cultures, the six rows of potatoes, and this Hugo culture. Oh, and it'd be nice to get one in the raised bed garden. And then everything is automated. This one finally reached the level to shut it off. I'm not going to win any awards for best looking watering system, but this was the quick frugal solution to get everything up and running. And then I can invest more in PVC, run it underground and do the same system. And every, you know, the concept is proven. So I just need to run PVC eventually, but this will do fine. And I know that someone's going to say, well, what about when it freezes? Well, even if it only ran 90% of the year, that's really great. But I've only had my IBC totes freeze maybe a few days out of the year. And then, you know, when the sun comes out, it heats everything up. So I won't be blown away if it waters all but maybe three days out of the year. And even if it doesn't, you know, and like I said, even 90% of the year would be way better than having to come out here and fill these up all the time. I've only got two timers, so I can put a splitter on one of the timers and then run a hose over here to the six rows of potatoes. I would imagine this is what I'm most concerned about getting water on for now. And I can, you know, run a, run a drip system through here. And from there, I guess I'll need to order mo more hose and maybe another splitter and then I can run one to here and there. I'll have to get another 100 feet of hose, I guess. Then I can run a drip system to the two hugels and then that one and maybe that one. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I guess, but, you know, having everything automated will be a blessing. As is the drip system in the geothermal here has been doing the trick. And over here in the greenhouse, also the drip system has been working really well. This is the line that runs down from the water tower to the livestock. So I'll get another splitter there. I'll, I'll put in a splitter and then just run over like 20 foot of hose to the chicken coop. So I'm just going to order myself at least another 100 feet and we'll, we'll go from there and try to piece the last of these things together. Oh, here's the, the sunflowers. These are finally going to blossom. And I had a beautiful, this was probably the best one that was planted over there. And she went and started eating it. She likes to eat my plants and trees, which makes it difficult. <laughs> That's why these have cages around them, but hopefully she leaves the rest of these alone. Will that work for you? <laughs> That's a pretty good waterer, huh? Well, you're welcome. Yeah. This system was possible due to gravity. If you're interested in how I built the water tower, to make this happen, I'll put a card on the screen here for you. Make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.